Chapter 4 The Earth Kajio Padhavi Kajio Nidiza 1 118 Now, it was said earlier, after that he should avoid a monastery unfavorable to the development of concentration and go to live in one that is favorable, 3.28 in the first place one who finds it convenient to live with the teacher in the same monastery can live there while he is making certain of the meditation subject. If it is inconvenient there, he can live in another monastery a suitable one a quarter or a half or even a whole league distant. In that case, when he finds he is in doubt about, or has forgotten, some passage in the meditation subject, then he should do the duties in the monastery in good time and set out afterwards going for alms on the way and arriving at the teacher's dwelling place after his meal. He should make certain about the meditation subject that day in the teacher's presence. Next day, after paying homage to the teacher, he should go for alms on his way back and so he can return to his own dwelling place without fatigue. But one who finds no convenient place within even a league should clarify all difficulties about the meditation subject and make quite sure it has been properly attended to. Then he can even go far away and, avoiding a monastery unfavorable to development of concentration, live in one that is favorable. The 18 faults of a monastery. 2. Herein, one that is unfavorable has any one of 18 faults. These are, 1. Largeness, 2. Newness, 3. Dilapidatedness, 4. A nearby road, 5. A pond, 6. Edible leaves, 7 flowers, 8, fruits, 9, famousness, 10, a nearby city, 11, nearby timber trees, 12, nearby arable fields, 13, presence of incompatible persons, 14, a nearby port of entry, 15, nearness to the border countries, 16, nearness to the frontier of a kingdom, 17, unsuitability, 18, lack of good friends. 119 One with any of these faults is not favorable. He should not live there. Why? 3 1. Firstly, people with varying aims collect in a large monastery. They conflict with each other and so neglect the duties. The Enlightenment tree terrace, etc., remain unswept, the water for drinking and washing is not set out. So if he thinks, I shall go to the alms resort village for alms and takes his bowl and robe and sets out, perhaps he sees that the duties have not been done or that a drinking water pot is empty, and so the duty has to be done by him unexpectedly. Drinking water must be maintained. By not doing it he would commit a wrongdoing in the breach of a duty. But if he does it, he loses time. He arrives too late at the village and gets nothing because the alms giving is finished. Also, when he goes into retreat, he is distracted by the loud noises of novices and young bhikkhus, and by acts of the community being carried out. However, he can live in a large monastery where all the duties are done and where there are none of the other disturbances. 4.2. In a new monastery there is much new building activity. People criticize someone who takes no part in it. But he can live in such a monastery where the bhikkhus say, let the Venerable One do the ascetic's duties as much as he likes. We shall see to the building work. 5.3. In a dilapidated monastery there is much that needs repair. People criticize someone who does not see about the repairing of at least his own lodging. When he sees to the repairs, his meditation subject suffers. 6.4. In a monastery with a nearby road, by a main street, visitors keep arriving night and day. He has to give up his own lodging to those who come late, and he has to go and live at the root of a tree or on top of a rock. And next day it is the same. So there is no opportunity to practice his meditation subject. But he can live in one where there is no such disturbance by visitors. 7.5. A pond is a rock pool. Numbers of people come there for drinking water. Pupils of city-dwelling elders supported by the royal family come to do dying work. When they ask for vessels, wood, tubs, etc., 120 they must be shown where these things are. So he is kept all the time on the alert. 8-6.
if he goes with his meditation subject to sit by day where there are many sorts of edible leaves, then women vegetable gatherers, singing as they pick leaves nearby, endanger his meditation subject by disturbing it with sounds of the opposite sex. 7. And where there are many sorts of flowering shrubs in bloom there is the same danger too. 9. 8. Where there are many sorts of fruits such as mangoes, rose apples, and jackfruits, people who want fruits come and ask for them, and they get angry if he does not give them any, or they take them by force. When walking in the monastery in the evening he sees them and asks, why do you do so, lay followers, they abuse him as they please and even try to evict him. 10.9. When he lives in a monastery that is famous and renowned in the world, like Dakio Ajari one hat the Kuchi, Siddhi Yajari, or Siddhala Pavada, there are always people coming who want to pay homage to him, supposing that he is an arahant, which inconveniences him. But if it suits him, he can live there at night and go elsewhere by day. 11.10. In one with a nearby city objects of the opposite sex come into focus. Women pot carriers go by bumping into him with their jars and giving no room to pass. Also important people spread out carpets in the middle of the monastery and sit down. 12-11 One with nearby timber trees where there are timber trees and osiers useful for making framework is inconvenient because of the wood gatherers there, like the gatherers of branches and fruits already mentioned. If there are trees in a monastery, people come and cut them down to build houses with. When he has come out of his meditation room in the evening and is walking up and down in the monastery, if he sees them and asks, why do you do so, lay followers, they abuse him as they please and even try to evict him. 1312. People make use of one with nearby arable fields, quite surrounded by fields. They make a threshing floor in the middle of the monastery itself. They thresh corn there, dry it in the four courts too and cause great inconvenience. And where there is extensive property belonging to the community, the monastery attendants impound cattle belonging to families and deny the water supply to their crops. 121 Then people bring an ear of paddy and show it to the community saying look at your monastery attendants work. For one reason or another he has to go to the portals of the king or the king's ministers. This matter of property belonging to the community is included by a monastery that is near arable fields. 1413 presence of incompatible persons, where there are bhikkhus living who are incompatible and mutually hostile, when they clash and it is protested, venerable sirs, do not do so, they exclaim, we no longer count now that this refuse rag wearer has come. 1514. One with a nearby water port of entry or land port of entry 3 is made inconvenient by people constantly arriving respectively by ship or by caravan and crowding round, asking for space or for drinking water or salt. 1615. In the case of one near the border countries, people have no trust in the Buddha, etc., there. 16. In one near the frontier of a kingdom there is fear of kings. For perhaps one king attacks that place, thinking, it does not submit to my rule, and the other does likewise, thinking, it does not submit to my rule. A bhikkhu lives there when it is conquered by one king and when it is conquered by the other. Then they suspect him of spying, and they bring about his undoing. 1717. Unsuitability is that due to the risk of encountering visible data, etc., of the opposite sex as objects or to haunting by non-human beings. Here is a story. An elder lived in a forest, it seems. Then an ogre stood in the door of his leaf hut and sang. The elder came out and stood in the door. She went to the end of the walk and sang. The elder went to the end of the walk. She stood in a chasm a hundred fathoms deep and sang. The elder recoiled. Then she suddenly grabbed him saying, Venerable sir, it is not just one or two of the likes of you I have eaten. 1818. Lack of good friends where it is not possible to find a good friend as a teacher or the equivalent of a teacher or a preceptor or the equivalent of a preceptor, the lack of good friends there is a serious fault. One that has any of those 18 faults should be understood as unfavorable. And this is said in the commentaries, 
a large abode, a new abode, one tumbling down, one near a road, one with a pond, or leaves, or flowers, or fruits, or one that people seek, 122. In cities, among timber, fields. Where people quarrel, in a port. In borderlands, on frontiers. Unsuitableness, and no good friend. These are the 18 instances a wise man needs to recognize and give them full as wide a berth as any food pad hunted road. The five factors of the resting place. 19 one that has the five factors beginning with not too far from and not too near to the alms resort is called favorable. For this is said by the blessed one, and how has a lodging five factors, bhikhus. Here, bhikhus, one, a lodging is not too far, not too near, and has a path for going and coming. 2. It is little frequented by day with little sound and few voices by night. 3. There is little contact with gadflies, flies, wind, burning sun and creeping things. 4. One who lives in that lodging easily obtains robes, alms food, lodging, and the requisite of medicine as cure for the sick. 5. In that lodging there are elder bhikkhus living who are learned, versed in the scriptures, observers of the Dhamma, observers of the Vinya, observers of the codes, and when from time to time one asks them questions, how is this, venerable sir? What is the meaning of this, then those venerable ones reveal the unrevealed, explain the unexplained, and remove doubt about the many things that raise doubts. This, bhikkhus, is how a lodging has five factors, AB 15. These are the details for the clause, after that he should avoid a monastery unfavorable to the development of concentration and go to live in one that is favorable, 3.28. The Lesser Impediments 20 Then he should sever the lesser impediments, 3.28 One living in such a favorable monastery should sever any minor impediments that he may still have, that is to say, long head hair, nails and body hair should be cut, mending and patching of old robes should be done, or those that are soiled should be dyed. If there is a stain on the bowl, the bowl should be baked. The bed, chair, etc., should be cleaned up. These are the details for the clause, then he should sever the lesser impediments. Detailed instructions for development. 21 Now, with the clause, and not overlook any of the directions for development, 3.28, the time has come for the detailed exposition of all meditation subjects, starting with the Earth Kajio. The Earth Kajio. 123 When a bhikkhu has thus severed the lesser impediments, then, on his return from his alms round after his meal and after he has got rid of drowsiness due to the meal, he should sit down comfortably in a secluded place and apprehend the sign in earth that is either made up or not made up. 22 For this is said for one who is learning the earth Kajio apprehends the sign in earth that is either made up or not made up, that is bounded, not unbounded, limited, not unlimited, with a periphery, not without a periphery, circumscribed, not uncircumscribed, either the size of a bushel, suppa, or the size of a saucer, sarava. He sees to it that that sign is well apprehended, well attended to, well defined. Having done that, and seeing its advantages and perceiving it as a treasure, building up respect for it, making it dear to him, he anchors his mind to that object, thinking, surely in this way I shall be freed from aging and death. Secluded from sense desires, he enters upon and dwells in the first Yohanna. 23 Herein, when in a previous becoming a man has gone forth into homelessness in the dispensation or outside it with the rishis going forth and has already produced the Hana Tetrad or Pentad on the earth Kajio, and so has such merit and the support of past practice of Yohana as well, then the sign arises in him on earth that is not made up, that is to say, on a plowed area or on a threshing floor, as in the elder Malaka's case. It seems that while that venerable one was looking at a plowed area the sign arose in him the size of that area. He extended it and attained the Yohana Pentad. Then by establishing insight with the Yohana as the basis for it, he reached Arahantship. Making an Earth Kajio. 24 But when a man has had no such previous practice, 
he should make a casio, guarding against the four faults of a casio and not overlooking any of the directions for the meditation subject learned from the teacher. Now, the four faults of the earth casio are due to the intrusion of blue, yellow, red or white. So instead of using clay of such colors, he should make the casio of clay like that in the stream of the Gunga 5 which is the color of the dawn. 124 and he should make it not in the middle of the monastery in a place where novices, etc., are about but on the confines of the monastery in a screened place, either under an overhanging rock or in a leaf hut. He can make it either portable or as a fixture. 25 of these, a portable one should be made by tying rags of leather or matting onto four sticks and smearing thereon a disc of the size already mentioned, using clay picked clean of grass, roots, gravel, and sand, and well kneaded. At the time of the preliminary work it should be laid on the ground and looked at. A fixture should be made by knocking stakes into the ground in the form of a lotus calyx, lacing them over with creepers. If the clay is insufficient, then other clay should be put underneath and a disc a span and four fingers across made on top of that with the quite pure dun colored clay. For it was with reference only to measurement that it was set above either the size of a bushel or the size of a saucer, 22. But that is bounded, not unbounded was said to show its delimitedness. 26 So, having thus made it delimited and of the size prescribed, he should scrape it down with a stone trowel a wooden trowel turns it a bad color, so that should not be employed and make it as even as the surface of a drum. Then he should sweep the place out and have a bath. On his return he should seat himself on a well-covered chair with legs a span and four fingers high, prepared in a place that is two and a half cubits that is, two and a half times elbow to fingertip from the casio disc. For the casio does not appear plainly to him if he sits further off than that, and if he sits nearer than that, faults in the casio appear. If he sits higher up, he has to look at it with his neck bent, and if he sits lower down, his knees ache. Starting Contemplation 27 So, after seating himself in the way stated, he should review the dangers in sense desires in the way beginning, sense desires give little enjoyment, MI 91, and arouse longing for the escape from sense desires, for the renunciation that is the means to the surmounting of all suffering. He should next arouse joy of happiness by recollecting the special qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, then ah by thinking, now, this is the way of renunciation entered upon by all Buddhas, Paksha Buddhas and noble disciples, and then eagerness by thinking, in this way I shall surely come to know the taste of the bliss of seclusion. 125 After that he should open his eyes moderately, apprehend the sign, and so proceed to develop it. Point six. 28 If he opens his eyes too wide, they get fatigued and the disc becomes too obvious, which prevents the sign becoming apparent to him. If he opens them too little, the disc is not obvious enough, and his mind becomes drowsy, which also prevents the sign becoming apparent to him. So he should develop it by apprehending the sign, Nimitta, keeping his eyes open moderately, as if he were seeing the reflection of his face, Mukha Nimitta, on the surface of a looking glass. Point seven. 29 The color should not be reviewed. The characteristic should not be given attention point eight but rather, while not ignoring the color, attention should be given. By setting the mind on the name concept as the most outstanding mental datum, relegating the color to the position of a property of its physical support. That conceptual state can be called by anyone he likes among the names for earth, Padhavi, such as earth, Padhavi, the great one, Mahi, the friendly one, Madhini, ground. Bumi, the provider of wealth, Vasudha, the bearer of wealth, Vasudhara, etc., whichever suits his manner of perception. Still earth is also a name that is obvious, so it can be developed with the obvious one by saying earth, earth. It should be adverted to now with eyes open, now with eyes shut. And he should go on developing it in this way a hundred times, a thousand times, and even more than that, until the learning sign arises. 30 When, while he is developing it in this way, it comes into focus 9 as he adverts with his eyes shut exactly as it does with his eyes open, 
then the learning sign is said to have been produced. After its production he should no longer sit in that place, ten he should return to his own quarters and go on developing it sitting there. But in order to avoid the delay of foot washing, a pair of single-soled sandals and a walking stick are desirable. Then if the new concentration vanishes through some unsuitable encounter, he can put his sandals on, take his walking stick, and go back to the place to reapprehend the sign there. When he returns he should seat himself comfortably and develop it by reiterated reaction to it and by striking at it with thought and applied thought. The counterpart sign. 31 As he does so, the hindrances eventually become suppressed, the defilements subside, the mind becomes concentrated with access concentration, and the counterpart sign arises. The difference between the earlier learning sign and the counterpart sign is this. In the learning sign any fault in the casio is apparent. But the counterpart sign 126 appears as if breaking out from the learning sign, and a hundred times, a thousand times more purified, like a looking glass disc drawn from its case, like a mother of pearl dish well washed, like the moon's disc coming out from behind a cloud, like cranes against a thunder cloud. But it has neither color nor shape, for if it had, it would be cognizable by the eye gross, susceptible of comprehension by insight, CXX.2F, and stamped with the three characteristics.11 but it is not like that. For it is born only of perception in one who has obtained concentration, being a mere mode of appearance.12 but as soon as it arises the hindrances are quite suppressed, the defilements subside, and the mind becomes concentrated in access concentration. The two kinds of concentration 32 Now, concentration is of two kinds, that is to say, access concentration and absorption concentration, the mind becomes concentrated in two ways, that is, on the plane of access and on the plane of obtainment. Herein, the mind becomes concentrated on the plane of access by the abandonment of the hindrances, and on the plane of obtainment by the manifestation of the Hanna factors. 33 The difference between the two kinds of concentration is this. The factors are not strong in access. It is because they are not strong that when access has arisen, the mind now makes the sign its object and now re-enters the life continuum. 13 Just as when a young child is lifted up and stood on its feet, it repeatedly falls down on the ground. But the factors are strong in absorption. It is because they are strong that when absorption concentration has arisen, the mind, having once interrupted the flow of the life continuum, carries on with a stream of profitable impulsion for a whole night and for a whole day, just as a healthy man, after rising from his seat, could stand for a whole day. Guarding the sign. 34 The arousing of the counterpart sign, which arises together with access concentration, is very difficult. Therefore if he is able to arrive at absorption in that same session by extending the sign, it is good. If not, then he must guard the sign diligently as if it were the foetus of a wheel-turning monarch, world ruler. So guard the sign, nor count the cost. And what is gained will not be lost. Who fails to have this guard maintained? Will lose each time what he has gained. 127 35 herein, the way of guarding it is this. 1. Abode, 2. Resort, 3. And speech, 4. And person, 5. The food, 6. The climate, 7. And the posture. As to these seven different kinds. Whenever found unsuitable. But cultivate the suitable. For one perchance so doing finds. He need not wait too long until. Absorption shall his wish fulfill. 36 1. Herein, an abode is unsuitable if, while he lives in it, the unerasant sign does not arise in him or is lost when it arises, and where unstablished mindfulness fails to become established and the unconcentrated mind fails to become concentrated. That is suitable in which the sign arises and becomes confirmed, in which mindfulness becomes established and the mind becomes concentrated as in the elder Padhani Yadissa, resident at Nagapabada. So if a monastery has many abodes he can try them one by one, living in each for three days, 
and stay on where his mind becomes unified. For it was due to suitability of abode that 500 Pikhas reached Arahantship while still dwelling in the Lesser Naga Cave, Cua Nagaliwa, in Tombaypayui Island, Sri Lanka, after apprehending their meditation subject there. There is no counting the Straimantars who have reached Arahantship there after reaching the Noble Plain elsewhere, so too in the monastery of Siddhalapabhita, and others. 37-2 an alms resort village lying to the north or south of the lodging, not too far, within one kosa and a half, and where alms food is easily obtained, is suitable. The opposite kind is unsuitable. Point 14. 38 3. Speech, that included in the 32 kinds of aimless talk is unsuitable, for it leads to the disappearance of the sign. But talk based on the 10 examples of talk is suitable though even that should be discussed with moderation. Point 15. 39 4. Person, one not given to aimless talk, who has the special qualities of virtue, etc., by acquaintanceship with whom the unconcentrated mind becomes concentrated, or the concentrated mind becomes more so, is suitable. One who is much concerned with his body 16 who is addicted to aimless talk, is unsuitable, for he only creates disturbances, like muddy water added to clear water. And it was owing to one such as this that the attainments of the young Bhikkhu who lived at Kopabita vanished, not to mention the sign. 128. 45. Food, sweet food suits one, sour food another. 6. Climate, a cool climate suits one, a warm one another. So when he finds that by using certain food or by living in a certain climate he is comfortable, or his unconcentrated mind becomes concentrated, or his concentrated mind becomes more so, then that food or that climate is suitable. Any other food or climate is unsuitable. 41.7. Postures, walking suits one, standing or sitting or lying down suits another. So he should try them, like the abode, for three days each and that posture is suitable in which his unconcentrated mind becomes concentrated or his concentrated mind becomes more so. Any other should be understood as unsuitable. So he should avoid the seven unsuitable kinds and cultivate the suitable. For when he practices in this way, assiduously cultivating the sign, then, he need not wait too long until absorption shall his wish fulfill. 42.8.